Denver is filled with beautiful, quaint neighborhoods with tree-lined streets. After all, these communities are a part of what make Denver so desirable. At the same time, there are very few neighborhoods that exude the grandeur and beauty of stately homes on sizable lots, like where we are right now in Crestmore. Today, we're going to take a look at what it would be like to live in the Crestmore neighborhood. Crestmore is where I have called home for the last 17 years. If you heard of this neighborhood but aren't exactly sure where it's located, let's help you out. So it's bordered on the north by 6th Avenue Parkway, on the east by Monaco Parkway, on the south by Alameda Avenue, and on the west by Holly Street. Within the neighborhood, there are the filings Crestmore 1 and Crestmore 2, in addition to a small 95-home enclave known as Old Crestmore. We are standing now at what many consider the anchor of the entire community, Crestmore Park. The park itself is 37 acres, comprised of wide open grass areas, soccer fields, tennis courts, a paved pathway, playground, and picnic areas. This park is used by so many in the community as a gathering place. Another feature making this community so desirable is the Crestmore Swim and Tennis Club. It's a private club for use by many families who call Crestmore home. The portion of covered indoor-outdoor space can also be used for events within the community. Okay, what do you say we drive over to your house in the neighborhood so people can get an idea of what the homes look like here? Okay, come on, let's go! <laughs> the biggest period of growth and expansion occurred in the 1950s when single-level ranch-style homes were built. A signature of the neighborhood were larger lots with spacious yards. Many of these sprawling ranches still exist today. Then, beginning in the early 2000s, developers and home buyers alike took notice to Crestmore. It was and still is an ideal neighborhood to either expand on existing homes or tear down the original homes and build much larger, more stately homes. Here we are at my home, built in 1940 in Old Crestmore, where some of the homes date back to the late 1930s. Most of the original homes here are two-story homes ranging in styles from Georgian, like mine, to Tudor to Colonial and more. The homes in this area are exclusively custom, single-family, detached homes. So, this wouldn't be a living in Crestmore video without talking about what it costs to actually own a home here. The average sales price here is $1.73 million. The average days on market here is just eight days, which explains the list-to-sale price ratio of 105%. Even at this price point, many properties here experience multiple offers. This is definitely a neighborhood that is in high demand. That's for sure. While Crestmore is almost entirely residential, there are a couple spots for retail and restaurants. At the corner of 3rd and Holly, we have some businesses on the east side of the street, including Basil Doc's Pizza, and a handful on the west side, including The Cheese Company. A few blocks south on Holly, you'll find some restaurants on the west side, like Park Burger. We know this is on the hilltop side of Holly, but it's just across the street, so it's close enough to call it a part of the neighborhood. And then we come to Pete's, a long-standing institution in the Crestmore neighborhood since 1982. Pete's is a local grocer specializing in fruits, vegetables, imported meats, and an extensive wine and spirit selection. They're also known for their huge assortment of plants and flowers from spring to fall. It's refreshing to see a local grocery store flourish for so many years. We hope you've enjoyed this tour and getting a sample of what it's like to live in Crestmore. If you have any questions about this amazing neighborhood, reach out to us anytime. <laughs>